U.S. President-elect Donald Trump is expected to name Senator Marco Rubio of Florida as his Secretary of State. Together with Donald Trump, we are going to make America not just great, but greater than it has ever been before. This was reported by the New York Times, citing three people who were part of the discussions. Trump appeared to have settled on Rubio, whom he had also considered when choosing his running mate earlier in the election cycle. Marco Rubio was elected to the U.S. Senate first in 2010, and he staked out a position as a foreign policy hawk. He's taken on hard lines against China, Iran, Venezuela, and Cuba in particular. He initially found himself at odds with those Republicans who were more skeptical about interventions abroad. But off late, he has also echoed Trump on issues like Russia's war against Ukraine. He says that the conflict there has reached a stalemate and it needs to be brought to a conclusion. Despite speaking in hardline terms about Russia in the past, Marco Rubio would likely go along with Trump's expected plan to press Ukraine to find a way to come to a settlement with Russia, and also at the same time, remain firmly outside the ambit of NATO. Marco Rubio has been among the most outspoken senators on the need for America to be more aggressive on China. He's adopted positions that later became more mainstream, both in the Republican and Democratic parties. For example, while he was serving in Congress during the first Trump administration, he began advocating an industrial policy that was meant to help America compete directly with China's state-owned economy. Rubio also served as a co-chairman of the bipartisan Congressional Executive Commission on China, which has aimed to craft a more aggressive policy on China. In 2020, Rubio sponsored a bill that tried to prevent the import of Chinese goods that was made with the use of forced labor by China's ethnic Uyghur minority. President Biden signed it into law the very next year. China has long been accused of treating its Muslim minority Uyghurs in the Xinjiang province as second-class citizens. In 2019, Marco Rubio helped persuade then Donald Trump, the president at that time, to adopt a harsh sanctions policy against Venezuela to try and unseat its authoritarian president, Nicolas Maduro. More recently, Rubio has expressed unalloyed American support for Israel's war in Gaza. When he was asked by a peace activist late last year about what he thought about so many Palestinian civilian deaths, he said, and I quote, I think Hamas is 100% to blame. Rubio has been a vocal advocate for strengthening ties with India, positioning India as a crucial partner in the Indo-Pacific region. Over the years, he's also championed efforts to deepen US-India defense cooperation and also in the area of trade. Back in July, Rubio had introduced a bill in the Congress which proposes to treat India on par with US allies like Japan, Israel, Korea and NATO allies when it comes to technology transfer. That bill also sought to support India in its response to growing threats to its territorial integrity and also bar India's arch-nemesis Pakistan from receiving any security assistance from the United States if it is found to have sponsored terror against India. Rubio's support for India also aligns with bipartisan efforts in Congress to counterbalance China's growing influence in Asia by propping up India. He has frequently highlighted the strategic importance of a strong India-US relationship, advocating for policies that not only promote shared economic interests between Washington and Delhi, but also reinforce the democratic principles that both nations uphold. Rubio has worked across party lines on the Senate Foreign Relations Committee and the Senate Intelligence Committee and would likely sail through a confirmation process in the Senate. If he does become Secretary of State, the main question is whether he would forego American intervention in different parts of the world and instead prioritize America's attention squarely on the rising threat that China poses. That approach would align with Trump's America First policy. Donald Trump has also made his choice for a number of other national security roles. He selected another Floridan, Representative Michael Waltz, to be his national security advisor and Representative Elise Stefanik of New York to be America's next ambassador to the United Nations. He chose Waltz as his national security advisor primarily because of his often tough line on China to oversee both foreign and national security policy at the White House. Waltz is the second Republican House member to be selected by Trump for a high-level job in his next administration. 
Like I said a moment ago, he's also chosen New York Representative Elise Stefanik for the role as ambassador to the United Nations. Waltz is 50 years old. He's been a multi-term congressional Republican. He's been a member of the Armed Services, Intelligence and Foreign Affairs Committee in the House. He would join the Trump administration even as it tries to address Russia's war in Ukraine and the ongoing conflict in the Middle East. But most importantly, both Waltz and Rubio have been picked for their very aggressive stand when it comes to China. Republicans have often complained that the Biden administration was taking its eyes off the wheel when it comes to China. Instead, it was being distracted by the wars in Ukraine and in the Middle East. In fact, Waltz's wife, Julia Neshwhite, was the Homeland Security Advisor in Trump's first administration. Mike Waltz is also the head of the India Caucus. He also advocates for advancing US defense and security cooperation with India. He served at multiple US deployments in Afghanistan and in the Middle East. In his time there, he won many military awards, including the Bronze Star. He also served as an Afghan policy advisor at the Pentagon under the then Defense Secretary Donald Rumsfeld. Even as a congressional freshman, Mike Waltz caught the attention of the Trump White House with his national security credentials. In 2020, in the days after Trump authorized the drone strike which killed Major General Qasem Soleimani of Iran, Waltz was included in a small group of Republicans who were invited to the White House and received a briefing on that strike. That was in fact seen as an elite group of Republican congressional members who were given access into the White House's strategy, its thinking and its operations covertly, which eventually got rid of one of America's top nemesis. Waltz, who became a fixture in Fox News on matters of foreign policy, is also widely regarded on the Capitol Hill as a hawk both on China and on Iran. He served multiple combat tours in Afghanistan and vociferously opposed President Biden's withdrawal of American troops from there back in 2020. Together, Waltz and Rubio will form the security and foreign affairs eyes and ears for Donald Trump in his second term as president. They are both equally hawkish on China and Iran. And that could, in fundamental ways, change not just those bilateral relationships between China and America or between Iran and America, but that will have huge ramifications for the wider region. But their first big challenge, both for Rubio and for Waltz, would be to end both wars in Ukraine and in Gaza without either of those two players feeling like the leader of the free world has thrown them under the bus.